Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this Sunday with St. Luke's. We're so glad you've come to join us in person or online. We are grateful for your participation in praise and worship this morning. So I invite you to join with us as you're able in um, body or in spirit for the opening song. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join with me as we sing the Gloria. Glory to God, 
glory to God, glory to God, God in the highest and on earth, these two people of goodwill. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the lessons. A reading from Psalm 62. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales, they are lighter than a breath all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice I have heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So today we have annual meeting, um, but I just wanted to uh, make a transition to that from our gospel reading. I just love the image of poor Zebedee scratching his head as his two sons jump out of the boat and <laughs> climb up on shore and, and walk away with Jesus. Um, you just wonder, what did Jesus say to them? Like, what, what about his presence um, caused such an immediate and... Um, of comprehensive action, right? A, a turning. Um, and I just, it, it causes me to wonder, like, 
have I had a similar experience in my own life? Like, what have my conversion experiences have been like? Um, if it's been a while, like, have I reconnected lately with that sense of call and that sense of invitation that elicits such an immediate and intense response? Um, and for some of us, we haven't really felt that. Um, I wonder when it might come or how we might discover it. But I also think um, it's cause for us to think just kind of what our greater calling is, right? So even beyond sort of a particular invitation to follow Jesus, it's um, what does that look like for us in particular with our gifts? Um, What is that calling in each of our lives? Do we have a clear sense of it yet? Um, And again, if it's been a while, like, How do we reconnect with it? Where is that invitation right now, and how are we responding to it? And I think we can also um, ask ourselves that same question as a church. What is that particular calling, that invitation that Jesus issues to St. Luke's, and how have we responded? So we will spend some time reflecting on that today. But I think the mission um, that we felt has resonated with us for the last several years Um, to create spaces to form life-changing relationships with Christ and each other across lines of privilege and prejudice that still feels just as fresh, just as necessary. Um, And with God's help, we've had some successes. We continue to be challenged along those lines too, but it feels worthy of our continued work. Um, And uh, we will begin to reflect on that. Um, Probably the best way to begin uh, I think, why don't we just, if Laurel, you're all right with continuing to kind of share our, our report, basically, um, and then we'll go from there. It's the annual meeting is called to order. So I want to start my official co-vicar report by just sharing what I think are a few highlights from this crazy last year. From my perspective, I'm grateful to so many people who have helped us transition to worship in this space. Um, So that feels like its own journey in 2020, in this last 12 months, that we've adapted in our worship. We're still not perfect. We're still learning. I know that um, online there are still glitches sometimes, and so we will continue to seek to find a way until this pandemic is over for all of us to be able to gather in some way together on Sundays. We have similarly adapted our Bible study and um, our formation offerings for adults and children. So we have an online children's Sunday school. If you don't yet know about it and would like to be connected, contact me or Jarell, um, our children's minister. So that's happening every Sunday, and we have sometimes 10, sometimes 20 children on a Zoom call engaging with learning the lessons for the Sunday, singing songs in their living rooms. Um, My own children love that part of it. So that's another thing that I count as a great blessing and success is all the work that our previous children's minister, Don Starry, and our current children's minister have put into getting everyone online. Another celebration in the area of children and youth Um, that I want to bring before our attention is the Learning Pod. And there are actually some students here from the Learning Pod today. Um, We are each week, each weekday now, hosting a group of about 16 children and youth in our sanctuary who don't have um, a lot of support at home during the day to do their schoolwork online. So we have um, four competent and capable caring adults with them who are able to provide that oversight and support for their learning and that is worth celebrating in this time even though we wish it could be bigger and broader. Um, I'm grateful for uh, Jarell Robinson and also Amani Ago for their work in developing that with me and especially to Miss Amani Ago for her oversight and coordination of it as we continue. Um, I also want to celebrate the online youth gathering that's happening. It's been hard to keep uh, a sense of vitality and interest around an online youth gathering as so many people are Zoomed out, tired of being on Zoom. 
but um, our youth leaders, Gracia Rivas and Yar Kwai, have continued to be faithful leaders in that and seek to connect with our youth each week in that online space. Is there anything I missed in the program area? I don't think so. So Colin mentioned that um, every church always has to answer for itself, just as we have to ask as individuals in a different way. Why did God put this community of people, this group of people, in this place, in this place broadly considered, at this time? Why? What is our collective mission together? What gifts has God collectively given us? What experiences, what passions, what places in society that we might then go forth and bear witness to the good news of God and Christ, as only we as a community can. Each church community has its own vocation, and each community must explore always how we live out that gospel call to reconciliation between humanity and with God. So to that end, we've been thinking and dreaming at the end of this year about the next hundred years of ministry at St. Luke's. And we'll kind of maybe not think about like 150 years down the road, but we're just going to think that we are about to hit a very important milestone. In 2023, it will be 100 years since St. Luke's Church was founded. And it's a, a milestone worth pausing and celebrating and also taking time to reflect even more intentionally maybe on this question. Many of you know that St. Luke's has changed a lot as a congregation since about the 1990s, late 90s, early 2000s, when this community was transformed by an influx, a wonderfully welcome influx of immigrants and refugees. And so now, 20 years down the line, I think it's time for us to consider how we, who we are now at St. Luke's, are called into the next 20 years of ministry. So to that end, we're looking at a particular experience in 2022 that I just want to share a little bit about with you. It sounds like a long time away. I know we can't even think ahead to August of 2021 right now. But this is important because I do want your feedback. I would love to hear from each of you and who are here in person and those of you who are joining us online about what you hear in this that speaks to you, that seems like there's life there, questions you have, concerns you have, other ideas you have. The vision is this. In 2022, there would be a period of intentional renewal. Part of that would include a renewal leave for Colin and I, which is otherwise called a sabbatical, a time of about three months when we'd be away from the congregation, renewing our spirit and our sense of call to this place. And at the same time, the congregation would undergo a period of renewal experiences, a time of reflecting in different ways with different leaders about who we are and where we're called to go in this next season. So first, I want to address three different hot button questions that always come up about renewal leaves, specifically about our leaving for three months in this time. One is, where are we going to get the money? Who is going to pay for us to have another pastor come in while we're gone for three months? And that's a great question. The good news is that because this renewal leave was included in our letter of agreement, we've been saving money as a church each year. And if you're really a attention to detail person, you would have noticed it in our reports in the past um, on our annual budget. We always include a small line item for saving for that period of renewal. So that's the good news. We have money to cover for that um, pastoral staff that will come in while we're away. The second question that often comes up is, what's going to happen while we're gone? And who's going to run things? Or how are things going to continue? And the answer there is a little bit more complicated. We're going to have um, a, a substitute priest come in to help lead services, lead worship, celebrate the sacraments, communion, baptisms as needed, funerals as needed. But we would also be relying on a group of about 18 lay leaders, both staff and bishops committee, who would be leading small groups to help people really get to know each other well, better during this time. And I'll get more, I'll get back to them in a minute. But the third question is, are the pastors going to come back? 
Are they just going to like leave on sabbatical and never come back? And the answer is yes, yes, we would be coming back. And the intention of this is actually to renew the leadership for a longer period of sustained mutual ministry with a congregation. So we're required in any renewal leave to promise that we'll come back for at least a year. And our hope would, of course, be for much longer than that. So I want to share another small part of this vision before we close this, this section of the, the meeting. And that is this vision around um, the congregation side of renewal, what that would look like, what that might include. And one idea that we have that we have been talking about with the bishops committee, our board, and also a subcommittee of the board is this notion of a delegation pilgrimage trip to East Africa. The idea being that we would send 18 lay leaders alongside Colin and myself to East Africa to visit different church communities, different faith communities, a couple different refugee camps for a few different purposes. One is that we might go and say thank you to the places and people who formed um, the solid foundation of faith that has so richly blessed us here at St. Luke's to learn from those communities and places, to see how they are embodying Christianity in a way that is obviously so compelling, that plants such deep seeds of faith, that when people come to the U.S., they are joining us here in worship and blessing us with their many gifts and with their presence. So that's one piece of it. We want to go and say thank you and learn from these communities of faith in East Africa. The second point that we would like to um, sort of involve in this journey is that we would be learning for our continued ministry. So one of the ideas is that um, we'd like to visit at least one refugee camp, hopefully two, including uh, the refugee camp in Tanzania where so many of our congregants from the Congo came to us from, including Matrina, who's not here this week, and other families that are beloved in our community. And another refugee camp in the north of Uganda where many of our current Sudanese congregants have family members even to this day. So we'd like to go to these refugee camps. Um, and one of the reasons that we'd like to do that is to inform our ongoing ministry with refugees and immigrants. This was put to us quite brilliantly and I think starkly by Catherine Baum, who is the executive director of Refugee Net. She herself has been a member of St. Luke's since the early 2000s when she came here as a refugee from South Sudan. But she says, I would like to go to these refugee camps because even though I was a refugee, I never lived in a refugee camp. There's many different ways of being a refugee and many different journeys to the US. And she says, I was an urban refugee. I lived in Egypt. I never lived in a camp. And yet people I work with all the time um, came from camps, lived decades in these camps. And I would like to know as a servant leader how I can be more compassionate, how I can better extend welcome and support them in their journey when they come to the United States. So that's an example of how we hope this trip, um, this pilgrimage, might inform and bless us in the years to come so that we might be a brighter blessing for the world and this community here in San Diego. I invite you to um, provide feedback. Give me um, and our leadership questions you have about this period of renewal, about this trip, and then the leaders coming back and leading small groups to reflect on their learnings and ways that we might move forward uh, in the time ahead. Our ears are open in this time. Nothing is set in stone. So please, please, please do speak up. Let us know what you're thinking. If you have ideas, if you have concerns, we would love to hear them as we continue even in these challenging times to dream and try to walk forward into following Christ as we discern. That's it. And now I invite with that, I would like to invite our treasurer, Michael Mowen, to come forward to offer our treasurer's report and the budget presentation. Good morning. Um, this is my eight years being a treasurer in St. Luke. 
Yeah. In this eight years, I learn and I grow uh, in St. Luke Finances. I can tell you one of the scariest years was 2020 for me. So when the COVID hit and we all have to go stay home, uh, the first thing came into my mind that we're gonna have to revise our budget this year. We don't know what's gonna happen. But I can tell you, um, God is great. And not just we hit our budget for 2020, but we exceeded it. And because your faith and this faithful community and the leadership of Mother Laura and Father Colin made this possible that St. Luke has been running now. Uh, we were expecting to be negative 53,000 last year, but we ended up with surplus of 46,000. So this is a different year, and this year all of you should have the finances are available on, on site, on, online, so you can look at them. It's not presentation. We don't have way to present <laughs> today, but I, I encourage those who are watching online, if you have questions, please send your question in. We'll be able to answer your question. And as we move forward for this 2021 also, we budgeted um, a little bit conservatively. Um, so we're looking to be negative around about 69,000, 70,000. But I can tell you that with your help and with this faithful community and people of God, I'm sure we will exceed our budget again in 2021. I, I want to thank all of you uh, for those who have been pledging. Uh, it's been a great year. And, and, and I know it's been a challenging year for us, too. So we have, we have to adapt the new, uh, the new reality we're living in now. So uh, if you have in uh, pledge, we encourage you uh, to pledge. And you can contact myself or Father Colon. Um, or any one of the bishop committee people or Byron, and we can sign you up uh, for your pledge. Um, I'll be waiting for your question if you have any question, and I'll make it short. Uh, the, there's no big presentation today, but I encourage you to look at all of our finances and the budget for this year online. Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Uh, my name is Byron. I'm the, actually the um, junior warden. So I'm here to uh, talk about the for second bishop's committee nominations. We actually have three nominations um, for uh, this year uh, that I'd like to present to you. Um, Joseph Ikeochi. Is Joseph here? Okay. Would you come up and stand behind me? Sure. Thank you. Uh, Apollo Jock, is Apollo here? No? Okay. And Fred Costale, who, if Fred, can you leave your camera for a second? <laughs> so three, these are three nominees for those. There are some that have departed us in the Bishops Committee this year because we, you basically age out after a couple of years. That didn't apply to all of them, <laughs> but so uh, if we could have either show of hands for these three nominees in selection of this next year's Bishops Committee. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? No? All right, congratulations. <laughs> um, and we usually meet, the Bishops Committee meets, um, well, it has been meeting actually twice a month. We've um, meet every other Sunday, so we'll probably continue to do that 
till the pandemic is done. <laughs> Uh, and then the, the second piece is election of uh, three uh, convention de delegates. We have that annually. This year it's going to be in Poway. I think last year it was in Yuma. Um, so we have um, Michael Mowen and Amani. Uh, Amani's here. Uh, and Ruth. Um, and I am the alternate for that. So if we are selecting them to... Um, be delegate or represent be delegates for St. Luke's in at our annual convention in Poway. So all those in favor? Aye. Any of any opposed? Nay. Okay, good. All right. Well, congratulations to you three. So it is my joy to get to celebrate our outgoing Bishops Committee members. <clears throat> Those two are, first I'll say a few words about Nicodemus Lim, who joined us on Bishops Committee three years ago. We um, now have three-year terms on Bishops Committee so that no one feels like they're sentenced for life when they're um, appointed and elected to this representative board of leaders for our church. Nicodemus was among that first class of those um, those serving in such a way. And I have to say this, Nicodemus has three young children now, I think two of whom were born during this his term, and yet he has shown up to each meeting with um, full presence and humility and wisdom and always bringing a fe fresh and faithful, surprisingly faithful and generous perspective to our biggest decisions. So I am so grateful to you, Nicodemus, if you're watching at home, and to your family for sharing you with us these um, Sunday mornings for our board meetings. And we, uh, we, I do want to say to you especially, um, this is not goodbye to our leadership board forever. We hope you'll be back again sometime in the future. But for now, a well-deserved rest with our great thanks. And we'll be delivering some flowers and a gift to Nicodemus after church today. But please join me in saying thank you to him. And secondly, I want to celebrate and give great thanks to Ms. Susie Laku, who um, first began to serve on the Bishop's Committee before those term limits were in place. So she estimates she has been on the Bishop's Committee somewhere between 10 or 15 years. The years start to run together at some point, but she has been a pillar of this community, certainly um, longer than that. And for the past two years, she has served as our um, bishop's warden, which is a, an Episcopal way of saying our board chair. She's been our, our head lay leader. Anyone who knows Susie knows of her steady faith, her incredible hospitality, her unbelievable work ethic. And so I want to simply say to you, Susie, at home, we are so, so grateful for you and your, specifically your leadership on the Bishop's Committee during the past four and a half years that we've been on that committee with you. Um, and we hope that you will find some time of renewal and refreshment so that you might serve and walk in new ways in the future in St. Luke's. Um, but now some well-deserved rest. So we look forward to that and give you thanks. And Susie also will receive um, another a gift and some flowers after this service today. I think we have Byron coming back to welcome our new bishop's warden. Yeah, I've been the uh, junior warden for this past year and will be that for this year. So, Michael, could you come up? So Michael <laughs> is moving from eight years as treasurer to now be the bishop's warden. So we welcome you. I've, I've been at St. Luke's for about three years and worked with Michael, all three of those. And he is a generous and warm person. Um, and there's nobody better to do this job than you. So we welcome you. Th congratulations. Uh, thank you, uh, Byron, for the introduction. Uh, I want to thank Father Colin and Mother Laura for um, trusting in me and, and giving me this big responsibility 
and also to the church as well. I want to thank all of you for having this faith on me, and I hope I will live up to it. Thanks, all of you. All right, unless there's any questions or comments, I think we'll adjourn the annual meeting and continue with worship. So we'll continue with the prayers of the people. Let us pray to God, who is made manifest in Jesus Christ. As the prophet Isaiah rang out, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Empower your church, O God, to ring out the good news of the light of your Son, Jesus, which pierces even the deepest darkness. Lord, in your mercy. As a star rose high into the nighttime sky to draw the nations to the Christ child, send your blessing, O God, on this troubled nation in its time of political transition and every nation in this time of pandemic and draw the whole world to your peace and truth. Lord, in your mercy. As John the Baptist guided throngs of people to the edge of the wilderness and baptized Jesus in the River Jordan, we pray that you would guide our country and our leaders to the ways of justice and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Like the Magi who traveled from afar to bring gifts and celebrate the Savior's birth, we pray for this community and for those who celebrate their own birthdays and anniversaries, especially those we now name silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. As Jesus climbed the mountaintop, proclaimed blessings on the people of the world, and then descended to care for those in need of healing, we pray for the sick and the distressed, the poor and the lame. We especially pray for David, Steve, and Betty Lou, and those we now name silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. As Jesus calls his disciples to leave their nets and boats and follow him, we pray for those we love and who have answered your call to follow Jesus in this life and to your heavenly kingdom. We pray for all those who have died in this year of more deaths than our hearts and minds can hold, entrusting them to your providence and care. Give them and all who grieve in their absence your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayers and make us reflections of your light, that the places of darkness in our world would be pierced by your light, and that all nations would be drawn to you and be overwhelmed with joy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to greet one another with a sign of peace. You may be seated. I do want to ask if there are any birthdays or anniversaries, special travels that we might say prayers for this week. Any late January babies among us? All right. Maybe at home. Whoever you are celebrating in this month, happy birthday. A few reminders about how communion works in this strange time of pandemic. At the invitation, when you're invited to the table, we ask that one member from your household come forward and take bread, a portion of bread, as many are needed for your household, um, and then bring them back to your chair, and please wait to consume until back in your seat. 
For those of you at home, you are invited to say a prayer for spiritual communion, which is an active invitation for Jesus to be present to you and known to you as he promised to be, not just through the bread and the prayers, but also through his spirit. And if you would like to receive communion bread at home, please let us know. We are delivering consecrated bread each week to those at home, so let us know if you'd like to be a part of that. Is there anything else for this day? All right. Then let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for the gifts of creation. The sun, stars, moon, plants, animals, rain, and our very lives. We offer our praise for the ways in which you have continually sought to draw near to this vast and complex creation, revealing yourself to us and offering means by which we might know and love you more fully, for the calling of Israel to be a light unto all the nations, for your words spoken through the prophets, and above all through the revelation offered through the incarnation of Christ Jesus, your Son, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so we join the saints and angels in proclaiming your glory as we sing. the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, you offered yourself to humanity and inaugurated a new chapter in human history in which we might know you more fully through your Son and the gift of his Spirit. You extended to us the possibility of holy communion through your self-sacrifice, a gift made known to us in the breaking of bread and the sharing of wine. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of your Son. By means of this holy bread, we show forth the sacrifice of his death and proclaim his resurrection until he comes again. Gather us by this holy communion into one body in your Son, Jesus Christ. Make us a living sacrifice of praise. By him and with him and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing and say. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ lived and died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
over the mountains and the sea your river runs with love for me and i will open up my heart and let the healer set me free i'm happy to be in the truth and i will daily lift my hands for i will always sing of when your love comes down yeah i, I could sing of your love forever i could sing of your love invite you to join me now in saying the post-communion prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion, now and yet to come, strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to receive a participatory benediction and blessing. So please stand. There are three acclamations of blessing that reflect the Epiphany season. And I invite you to voice your own affirmation and reception of that blessing by saying amen at the, at the end of each of them. May Almighty God, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon the only begotten at his baptism in the River Jordan, pour out that Spirit on you who have come to the waters of new birth. May God, by the power that turned water into wine at the wedding feast in Cana, Transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. And now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. We want to see Jesus lifted high, the banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, the banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know he is the way to heaven. We want to see him.
We want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Step by step, we're moving forward, little by little, taking ground. Every prayer, a powerful weapon, strongholds come tumbling down and down and down and down and down. We want to see Jesus lifted high, the banner that flies across this land. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. We're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. Step by step, we're moving forward, little by little, taking ground. Every prayer, a powerful weapon. Strongholds come tumbling down and down and down and down and down. We want to see Jesus lifted high, and that flies across this land. That all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, and that flies across this land. That all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see. We want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high.